on cloud and try to use this as a motivation why we're doing that. Uh, okay, so uh, this is a joint work with my previous uh, postdoc over here live, who's now at uh, um, uh, RPI, Russell Politics Institute, and my former student, uh, Jen Liang, and a former postdoc, TW1. Okay, I think I have combined the user both. Okay, so what do I mean by instructor data, actually? Uh, that's exactly what Ron said. You're, you're dealing with everyday point clouds, okay? But uh, the typical thing is like this, what you're doing is now point cloud. For 3D modeling, you use data scan, you can get a bunch of this data now, even if it's a very small chip. Uh, uh, but basically, the, this kind of point cloud data for 3D modeling is, is everywhere. But also, you can think of the point cloud instead of 3D point clouds, you can think of uh, high dimensional uh, point clouds. So, for example, if we try to do image analysis, uh, each image it's 100 by 100 pixels, it will be, if you stretch it out, it's a 10,000 dimensional vector, so each image is a point in the uh, 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 10,000 dimensional space. Uh, or you can have social data or graph or network and you can embed it in the Euclidean space. But, but the important thing is, uh, for example, uh, if you're talking about this this is basic point cloud. Okay, each uh, each image is a point, but this is embedded in very high dimensional space. But at some time, the object you're studying is now like uh, random image, so which is still everywhere in the uh, ten thousand dimensional space. Usually, they have structures, very geometric structures or textures. They put you all this point, if not strictly on, but also Unify a low dimensional manifold. Okay, that's uh, why you want to extract the structure of the low dimensional manifold, and hopefully you can find some global structures, global features, so you can do this analysis. But anyway, what I'm saying is, unstructured data is nothing; it's just a, a bunch of points. Okay, and that's you know now this machine learning feature vectors also a point in, in the high dimensional space. So it's just a bunch of point cloud. There's no connection information. There's no parametrization. Okay. When I talk about parametrization, usually I mean this really nonlinear um, parametrization where uh, you can reveal the true dimension of the, 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 the point cloud or the, the manifold. Okay. So there are many, many challenges. One of the things uh, this embedding is highly non-unique. So. One simple one is rigid uh, translation, okay, you, uh, rigid motion, all these things. Uh, but there are others, for example, uh, which this group has learned a lot, we, we uh, study a lot, and also we're trying to do is this isometric uh, transformation. Okay. So, for example, me with different poses, um, this is, you can think of the intrinsic corresponding, if my skin does not stretch, then they should really represent the same geometry, but up, up to some isometric transformation. But the difficulty for that is that transformation is infinite dimension, is not easy to parametrize, versus rigid transformation, you only have a few parameters. To that. But anyway, you have to deal with this. You, have, you cannot just take the face value, the x, y, z coordinate, that's not going to be able to uh, really um, correspond well between different shapes and surfaces. Uh, the other thing is, if you really, 3D is okay, it's surfacing in 3D, but if you're talking about really high dimensional space, I mean, even 3D you cannot have a really a canonical one, like right? when you uh, talk about images, it's all canonically parametrized and globally by unit square. Okay? So that's why I allow you talking about the linear space defined on the, uh, on the unit square. But here is a ge geometry, so there's no, uh, first of all, it does not form a linear space. Second of all, um, you, can, you do not have a canonical or natural way to parametrize. There is R to form all those things, but um, it's highly non trivial to have that. Second of all, uh, they're not uh, canonical. Okay. 
So also it's very in a very high dimension, uh, make all these uh, triangulation and you know, parametrization much harder uh, than, uh, than in low dimension. Uh, and usually in high dimension the sampling is not like image is sampled uniformly on the grid. Here you have very likely non-uniformity like holes and all sorts of things. Uh, so this is just a mix. Not so natural, not so easy even just for representation purpose, and not only to say processing analysis. For images, you have many tools, wavelets, Fourier uh, series, um, many things. Okay, but here you don't have a natural representation to do that. However, um, if you think local structure can uh, still be extracted. So in a sense, any smooth surface locally is a perfect graph. Okay. So locally, you can basically what I'm trying to say. Maybe you will see is tangent space is a good way to parameterize local geometry. Uh, so you have the local structure. You have a local linear um, representation of graph. It become uh, uh, function space is linear space. Uh, so that can be extracted. The question is, how do you connect dots? You have some local uh, 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 description of local geometry, and but how do pieces this local description together in order to get a more global characterization? Uh, that's also the most and very useful when you compare to um, a ge a geometric shapes or uh, surfaces. So. Here again, the idea we're trying to use uh, is use geometric PDEs to connect the dots. Okay? If you look about PDE, what is good about it's, um, you know, Laplace equation is really just describe how you interact or heat equation with your neighbors, and then you know the global field. The same thing, if you can know how the local local distance, geodesic distance, and then you, you you patch them together, you can find the global geodesic distance, or you can think of just like heat diffuses on the manifold on the surface by just local how it goes, and you can piece them together by these um, uh, uh, geometric PDEs. Uh, by you can feel how the heat will uh, diffuse al along the whole surfaces, then you know more about the global properties. So this is the starting point, and the difference is, is between, you know, there are some, most of the time, uh, people now they use this, not geometry, it's a linear structure like PCA. PCA is good locally, but if you say P PCA to describe a global nonlinear structure, the PCA is usually not a good choice. But local, as I said, you can always approximate something locally by linear structure. But when you piece them together, uh, like your geometric PDE, you can have uh, the, the, the characterization or understanding of the whole uh, more global structures. Okay, so actually, uh, I'm going to focus on the second part today. So because here, I already give the motivation. I try to on this structure data, which is on clouds, I want to use geometric PDEs to extract global features. And then, if, in order to do that, you first have to be able to computing or approximating differential oper operators on point clouds. Okay. Here is without parametrization, without triangulation. I'll talk the first part in the lab. Okay, that's one minute show. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so this is the new part. Okay, so as I said, assume this point cloud is sampled uh, from manifold with this metric G. Uh, 
now we're going to use connection with dots. Okay, so locally you can, for example, what we do is using local PCA uh, to find tangent normal space and actually metric locally can be approximated. <laughs> and then we're going to connect in the dots. Okay, basically the whole differential operator defined on the whole manifold uh, based on this local uh, discretization. Okay, so one thing is of course, I'm sure you use a lot is trying to find uh, the eigen system, eigen value problem for the Laplace by Tronkin operator. Okay, so, so you have to solve this. Okay, so that's basically this eigen function provides a free basis uh, for your um, for functions defined on your manifold, and also this mapping has very nice properties for. Uh, Invariance of the asymmetric transformation and uh, scale invariant and multi scale. Okay, so now you have to solve it, right? So what you have is just point cloud. You want to, on that point cloud to, to solve that Laplace by Tommy uh, eigenvalue problem for that Laplace by Tommy operator. Okay, so there are a few methods available purely on point cloud without triangulation without uh, parametrization. Once you have triangulation, you can always use in standard finality to become a triple thing. Uh, here is without triangulation and can be <coughs> embedding in really high dimension. Uh, so uh, Kaufman and his collaborators and Ms. Balkinson one what they did is it's diffusion kernel based method. It's somehow related to this two point integral. So the main thing is geometrically is really if diffusion is along uh, geodesics, geodesic distance diffusion. They, basically, this one is more or less like using uh, local Euclidean distance, which is the heat kernel for the Euclidean uh, Laplacian operator to pro locally approximate. Uh, true manifold Laplace. So another way of saying is you are using piecewise linear approximation uh, to the true geodesics. And the good thing about that is their linear system is always uh, called monotone in its uh, diagonal dominant. I don't think diagonal is one sign or all diagonal is different sign the sum up is equal to zero. Okay? But you know monotone scheme can at most first order. So basically there is good thing is they always have a diagonal dominant system, which we can do that too, and also we can do high order, but uh, that's what they're doing. But usually their convergence is is quite uh, or yeah the order of accuracy is quite low. And what we are doing is different, which I will describe in a minute, but the key feature is, again, uh, we don't need any global match, triangulation match, or parametrization. Only local information, basically your king nearest neighbor, uh, uh, for each point. Uh, we just, basically, it's kind of, you can think of the finite difference, where design and finite differences depends how neighboring points are positioned corresponding to this. We'll design uh, a scheme that can be of uh, any order, depends on how much, uh, uh, what polynomial approximation you want to do. And also, it doesn't have to be for uh, these kind of things. You can do hyperbolic DDEs. Uh, so we're, I'm talking about, for example, computing the geodesic distance, high corner equation on point cloud. And also with high core dimension. Uh, with or without boundary. Uh, the complexity really scales well with the number of points, that's for sure, and also the true dimension. Okay, So if your two-dimensional surface, it's a two-dimensional manifold embedded uh, in a highly dimension, it doesn't matter. Okay, It's still related to dimension. Uh, and also, again, I'll show by design uh, discretization, uh, uh, you can properly, you can achieve high order and stability. Okay, I'll, I'll show you the details. Okay, the 
idea is very simple. It's just chain rule. Okay. So what it says, what Should be behind the Oh, so this one. No? no. Okay, so please. I can pull That's fine. No. Run. It's okay. Okay, so basically say Let's say your manifold is just one D curve, so you have functions. Okay? Yeah. Um, okay. So you have a function defined on the manifold, which is a curve. You really want to say the, the intrinsic differential operator is the rate of change of function with respect to the arc length. Okay? Not the Euclidean, Euclidean distance between these two points. So only thing is two things. It's partial f, partial s. But if I can draw locally, okay, as I said, I can use local PCA, uh, PCA through the k nearest neighbor, I can roughly, it doesn't have to be perfectly tangent space, but as, as long as this is a good graph, okay, you, you don't want something like this happens, okay, this coordinate is not so good because it's, or maybe even here, okay, this. But as long well as you can have some coordinate like this, so this is my x, that's Euclidean, Euclidean space, is a tangent space. So what you do, you have some f defined here, and this manifold, I call it s, or r class, I call it corresponding to this manifold s. So you only have to do partial f, partial x, partial x, partial s. That's part. This rate of change of the f with respect to the arc length. And what do you do? So this is this is <coughs> partial f, partial x, partial s, partial x. It's inverse. So basically saying I only have to reconstruct this function f in this local coordinate using say I'm going to use moving v square. You use local reconstruction of this manifold, which is this curve around here, and then you know everything. Okay. Just through this, you find another way of saying is you find a local tangent space that can parametrize both the function defined on the manifold and the manifold well. Then you can use this square to approximate this, use this square to construct this, and then you know partial f, partial f. Okay. That's all you need to do. Basically, just a chain rule. This is basically what we first did in a, a kind of, uh, for moving interface problem. We have a group based particle method. Which we, uh, we first have this, then we apply to this application. And so basically, you only need to use PCA through K nearest neighbor to find the tangent space and the normal space. Uh, construct the least square approximation of M and F, both the manifold and F in this local uh, tangent plane parametrized by this local tangent plane. And then, you know, finding these things becoming a least square problem becomes a linear problem, we can do this. Okay. So this is fancy version for the uh, high dimensional case. Uh, it's, it's basically this. Right? So this is the local flat space, tangent space. You can find the gradient of F with that. G is after you have a local uh, say polynomial reconstruction of the manifold, you can basically construct the metric and then everything is defined. What are the gammas? What are the what? This, uh, the, before, before g minus 1 you have this uh, the, the first uh, equation at the top, the gradient operator? Oh, this one is a tangent. Tangent direction with respect to I see. x1, x2. You, 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 this is parametrization, right? The d x1, x2, x is the, uh, uh, the coordinate system in the tangent space. Mm -hmm. So, now we have to talk about moving the square. Right? Everything becomes, here you have two moving the square. Uh, the 
One is for the manifold, the other one is for function in this common coordinate system. Okay? So it's fancy writing, but everything is the B is nothing, it's just the polynomial basis. Okay? So here this matrix is nothing, this is a weight. Okay? So it depends how far away from your central point. I'm, this is my reference. I try to approximate some derivative of f with respect to the underlying metric at this point. Okay, so you kind of de de design a weight. That's very useful. Further away, you use less. Uh, we'll talk about how the design of this in a more stable way. So, but anyway, you, you, you have this. Okay, so then you have a linear system. So basically, your unknown, your your your, your polynomial approximation is nothing, is a linear combination of this basis function with this coefficient, which depends on the x bar. <coughs> which means depends the location of x bar with your king of neighbor. So it's all embedded in here, you can do that, and that's basically this. So, this is developed in Israel. Levin and Lindman, they, they, they analyze this error. So basically, this is the kind of produce. If your fx happens to be a polynomial with degree less or equal than m in d dimensions, then you will exactly recover this. Otherwise, okay, so basically, uh, your ci, which is supposed to approximate the um, is these things, the alpha i, this is multiple indices, uh, derivative of f, that's point, is given by this. Okay. You have uh, <coughs> like a tail expansion. Uh, so the Im important thing is actually, if you look at this, if these points are uniformly distributed, their uh, distance between points is about h, then that's exactly the same, your error is this is the order of your polynomial you do, and this is the derivative, the total number of derivative you take. So that's the usual uh, thing. Okay, so if you use quadratic functions or proximity, <coughs> uh, the function you take the first derivative, you will have uh, 2 plus 1 minus 1 is the second order accuracy. Okay. If they're evenly distributed. Actually, it's okay. So, what's good about so what eventually? Okay, if you forget about all the detail, what really we're doing is, you know, if you saw PDE on a rectangular grid, because the relative location of your neighbors are fixed, you can have a finite different scheme. That is basically exactly through the same process. It's just because your points are so regularized, you can exactly write down what are the coefficients for your uh, for your East neighbor, north neighbor, and so on and so forth. Here it's just your points are randomly distributed. So for each point, you have to go through this point by knowing the knowledge or function value at those points in order to get approximation, a polynomial approximation of the function at this point and corresponding derivatives of that polynomial is, pro is approximating the derivative of the underlying function. And actually, by choosing the uh, proper weights, the good thing is a moving least square approximation is more robust and flexible than interpolation. Interpolation is saying your degree of freedom and your constraint exactly match. You have a unique solution. But by choosing a little bit more points, you're feeding not just one a little bit oversampled or uh, uh, over constraint. You can more stable with respect to noise because everybody contributes and noise is cancelled. And also more flexible in a sense. I have more degree freedom than the constraint. Later I will show you, for example, if I want to put some special structures, properties into finite different schemes, I can input in input that in. Okay, so that's the things. How does it relate to Eno essentially on asymmetric schemes where you have to select the stencil according to the most stable? Yes, that's a nonlinear scheme. Um, but actually, my next one is nonlinear. But here, I'm very good point. I'm not dealing with trying to dealing with P 
is non-smooth function. I'm trying to make the because find the difference, right? It's local, so you cannot input some global structure like positive set, uh, positive definite. You cannot do that. Yes. So if it would have been a uniformly sampled grid, the moving list course would have been <coughs> converted into a, a linear spatially invariant field. Okay. So suggest that you are quite limiting yourself by using the moving these curves, your treatment is sort of convolution in a wider sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Basically you are saying every point I have to do this. But don't you want to go beyond that and go to the nonlinear option of being adaptive to the location and the behavior of the signal? Well, it's uh, all the freedom is here. So the, what moving this square you need to do at each point is up to you to choose. So here we 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 think by choosing k nearest neighbor is already uh, scaling invariant, right? You, you 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 can think I have a uh, very dense point, then I have more accurate things. If it's sparse, it's already uh, more, less accurate. But the main basically thing is, if I want to construct a polynomial, I at least need a certain constraints, certain data to fit. Okay, so here is every point you do the thing. So basically you can see, you can change um, this weight, I, I didn't do that way, but this weight can depend on the x bar we're talking about. It's all depend how you, you can create these things, depend, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that, exactly how this adapted to the data distribution. Here I'm just saying, you give me this, if this is what you want, I can feed a polynomial, I can using the polynomial, the derivative of polynomial to approximate the function, the derivative of the function. And actually, what we observe that many times if you have more or less evenly distributed points, you have simple convergence. Uh, so basically saying, um, if you look carefully at the, at the truncation error, if the derivative you want to approximate, and the order of the polynomials have the same parity. So, for example, if I have want to com compute curvature, which is second derivative, then I use second degree polynomial. In general, you can only have first order accuracy. But if the point, just like the central difference, right? If you use that to do, you'll have second order accuracy. So here too, if you do careful a study of the errors, you find when this happens, they have same parity, uh, the, the, the term appeared there, actually the leading term, there's always some odd terms comes up. And then because of symmetry, they will cancel each other. So you have the super convergence. So in the general, we, we see if the data is more or less symmetri uh, symmetrically evenly distributed, you have one order higher than what you would expect. Ah, here is stable moving these squares. So, for example, if you have a lot of points, okay, supposed to be 2D point clouds, but most of the points are 1D, you have only one point here, one point here, right? You wouldn't take the same weight for each point because that does, does not see the, the geometry here. So here, basically saying um, you are this weight, Okay, this is the distance to the reference point, but up to a weight that is proportional to the local sampling density. So basically, this point, using the Vernal diagram, okay, I, I, I'm not good at that thing, but uh, if some of the Vernal cells, okay, so you will see each point of this, because they are densely here, your, your weight will be adjusted to according to the local, <coughs> probably something like this, local area of the Vernal set. So that's basically what it is saying. That's uh, adjust, adjusted to the local sampling density. And uh, what they prove is basically the error estimate is a constant multiplied the best polynomial. Okay, T bar is the best part. 
uh, approximation. Here, we know where uh, discretizing, for example, in this case, uh, Laplace operator, Laplace operator. So you know Laplace operator, you can talking about um, the self adjoint operator, so it should uh, positive definiteness. Or you have the maximum principle. So in this finite different discretization, because everything is locally done, you really cannot enforce symmetry because that's a global property. But what you can do is you can put in a special constraint because I'm using this square, so I have more freedom than constraint. I have add, I can add a more constraint. So uh, basically what it's saying is, okay, you want to approximate the, for example, the eyes, I, I, this is, yes, uh, which is, you know, the I means some derivative, okay, some derivative of F, okay, so let's say, let's say 1D function, you want to find the second, approximate second derivative, and what you're trying to say is, the moving least square is equivalent to the same thing is, I use a linear combination of functions f at all neighboring points such that it has consistency constraint. Basically saying when I do the linear combination, okay, uh, only the second derivative survives. When I linear com combine them, the uh, these are one, r2, da da da. This is basically if in one d I'm talking about second derivative. Then this vector is 0, 0, that's corresponding to the function value, corresponding to the first derivative, and this one corresponding to the second derivative and higher. So you want to be in a combination of this by doing Taylor expansion such that the coefficient, you collect the coefficient between the constant term is 0, between the first derivative is 0, before the second derivative is 1, and other derivative equal to 0. So that's the order of consistency. The accuracy is enforced by the linear constraint. And then you want a maximum principle. So basically, the, do the diagonal term is dominant. Because we have consistency, okay, so which means the sum of the coefficients already has to be zero in order to be consistent. The di difference operator has to be zero. The sum of the to be zero, so you only have to input in that least square, you're minimizing this. This is equivalent to moving least square problem to have linear combination of my neighboring points to achieve this derivative, at the same time, this is minimized, this quadratic energy of this coefficient. We add one more constraint. That is, the diagonal is of different sign from off diagonal. This quadratic programming, if you do that, you will have a discretization that is, say, have the desired order of accuracy, plus it satisfies discrete maximum principle. Okay, so manifold with high, uh, 